you hear me now? I can, yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right, fantastic. All right, John, we got John. How, how do you pronounce your last name, John? Piricello. 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 Is that like a, a woodwind of some sort? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's all those things. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Sicilian, and it means uh, Uccello is a bird. So, you know, I'm not sure. Peter the bird, maybe? I don't know. Sure, that's, why not? That's a cool wrestling name, if you're into wrestling. Peter the bird. <laughs> No, a cool wrestling name. Like if you're a wrestler, are you into are you into wrestling? Oh, wrestling! Oh, like uh, yeah, like a professional wrestler, like Peter the Bird. Right, 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 right. Be like, like, uh, like my uh, my Game of Thrones name or something. You can do something like that. Are you a big fan of Game of Thrones? I'm not. Uh, but I'm completely surrounded by people that are, so I, I have to. You know, I, I'm not a hater by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I don't know. I know it's an asthma. Are we on the air? Are we yeah. podcasting? Yeah, yeah, we're recording, man. We're doing right. it. So, so I should say things that matter. No, no, no. You don't have to. No it, way. This is just all... <laughs> oh, I, it's, oh, I won't. It's Maybe. all informal. <laughs> we're just hanging out. Uh, yeah, no, I'm like, you know, I never... I think when I was a kid, I read The Hobbit, but I just, I'm not, I, you know... I have a couple of kids that are super into that, and a girlfriend and her kid, and you know, I I know I'm outnumbered, and I, I have the utmost of respect for Tolkien and all that stuff, and what's his face that does Game of Thrones is is awesome. It's awesome what he's accomplished. Um, I'm just I'm not drawn to it. I guess it's not for everybody. Yeah, some things just aren't for you. It it ain't it ain't for me. That's for sure. <laughs> I think sometimes every it seems like every time I tune in, somebody's being stabbed in the face. It is. It, I think that's the way it is, or or having sex. Either one of those yeah. two. <laughs> okay, I will admit that I've seen the Khaleesi naked both times. Okay, so, cool. For whatever reason, I guess it's just by chance. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what the internet's for. <laughs> that's right. I didn't know you know she had clothes on. Like I didn't. I only watch stuff on YouTube. Anyway. That was kind of a badass scene when she came uh, all, and it came out of the fire like that. I thought that was, wasn't that a season opener or closer? Well, or season, a spoiler alert. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is from like fucking uh, 10 years uh, ago. It's, <laughs> it's I like, mean, when she was building the fire and camping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right she was building the fire. No, I think that was like the first season, right? Wasn't it the... I probably. I think that was like the end of the first season, like that episode. I was just like, whoa, this chick is fucking awesome. So... I don't. I mean, I'm a. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a diehard fan. I'm more of a Lord of the Rings, but um, it, it catches my attention. She's definitely one of the reasons why I watch. So, same. I mean, it works I think out. You're probably not alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you for calling in to Finding Stacks. Um, it's been a, been a long time coming, man. What's that? It's been a long time coming. I've been waiting to talk to you oh. for quite some time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pins and needles, this oh, guy. Oh, man. I feel terrible. There's been a miscommunication. I didn't even realize that you were waiting for me. No, nah, I, I waited a while before I reached out. But I was waiting. You just didn't know it. That's okay. good. That's better for me. It's not your fault, John. So what, that's, what, that's the main thing. So what, do you got work, what are you working on right now? Well, right now, uh, I'm, I'm uh, working on a show for HBO called Barry. And uh, it's um, created by uh, by Bill Hader and Alec Berg. Oh, cool! Uh, and it's a wonderful, wonderful dark comedy. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're shooting that um, seven episodes. Uh, done four of them. We're shooting those through um, May. You know, the end of May. Kick ass! Yeah, it's pretty great. That's very cool. Fantastic. So, are, do you were you um so for, to get that part? Did you did they just see you in other things, or did you go and have to do the whole uh, auditioning? Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, all that. All the same old routine that actors go through. You know, there's an audition. It's you know like a struggle because auditioning is weird and doesn't really resemble work or anything. It's like it's its own thing, and so got through that process difficultly. That was a <laughs> it was a struggle getting through that. <laughs> but then they were kind. 
kind enough, I guess, you know, they saw something in me, and God bless them, they, they called me back in, and, and then the callback went well, and so uh, here I am. Lucky me. Yeah, no, definitely. Those guys are pretty fucking hilarious and successful. Right, now you get to add Bill Hader to the pantheon of people you've worked with. Very cool. And when when do you think that's coming out? You said the end of May. Well, we're going to shoot to the end of May. I, I, I imagine there'll be sort of a turnaround getting it on TV, but um, it's uh, it's going to be a great film. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be a great film. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be a great film. 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 Yeah, it's going to be a great and and did, did did it have Helen Mirren in it? It did have Helen Mirren. Yeah, she was there too. <laughs> she was just there, just hanging out. She was just hanging out. What, what, what was that? They were actually. We did. We had dinner before we started shooting. We we uh, uh is that true? Yeah, we all we all went and had dinner. Barry oh. Levinson and Kyle and Helen and David Mamet and Rebecca Pigeon. And That's gonna be pretty fucking yeah. cool. Man, to be a fly on the wall during that dinner. It's funny, yeah. I guess, I guess it's. Uh, I guess I don't. I don't even really remember much of what we talked about. Um, we talked about the Godfather for a while. I remember that. Um, but Al, Al wasn't uh, participating in that conversation. I think the the woman who played um, who played, I guess, what would be his grandmother, right? Because it's uh, the young version of. Well, he, he, I'm pretty sure he gets that a lot. <laughs> huh? I said, I'm pretty sure he gets that a lot. You guys want to talk about Godfather? He's like, oh, shit. He's, he's like, yeah, I, yeah. It's funny. I never, I never, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume, you know, that somebody wants to, uh, you know, talk about that. I mean, I, I think it's the greatest movie of all time, you know. I don't, I mean, there's certainly nothing that I think is better than The Godfather, but, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a strange thing. I mean, he's a, obviously a, a hero, you know, as a as an artist. Um, yeah, definitely. But at the same time, that doesn't really serve you if you've got to work with somebody to be thinking about what a, you know, same thing with David Mamet, right? It's like if I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, the, the man that changed American theater. <laughs> it's going to be tough to work with him, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, maybe he was just staying in character. It was a uh, Phil Spector, right? He no, he didn't stay in character. He was he. Uh, I mean, I didn't see any of that. I didn't see. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I I work with actors that do that to stay in character, and but, you know what? The whole thing is so it's so um, you know it's such a tenuous sort of thing that I don't. I wouldn't even begin to question what somebody does to to, to get through it. You know. Do you do, you do that? that I employ, huh? I'm sorry. You go ahead. You finish. I'm sorry. Well, no, no. I was going to probably answer the question I think you were about to ask, which is that uh, I, you know I, there have been times where I'm probably doing something that's close to the to method acting. I guess I remember one time doing. We just did a movie called Incarnate with um, Aaron Eckhart, and Aaron was like very kind of into like he would be doing push-ups before scenes and stuff. He's amazing, amazing actor. Um, uh, and um, very sort of uh, supportive and present. And, uh, and I remember we're doing a scene where the, the, the evil demon has to kind of come bursting through the, the door, and they were just saying, you know, boom or bang or something, you know, and it was very kind of underwhelming. And, and I remember Aaron was like going, look, can we get some kind of noise or something, you know, that would help us. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't know, do we really need that? And finally they got a PA with, you know, to get to two 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 by fours and slap them together at the right moment and it was really startling and i remember thinking oh shit man that's that's what he's talking about he couldn't he couldn't be more right you know that was definitely helpful you know mm -hmm. to have that real stimulus but anyway 
No, yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that's what I was going to ask that. Like, have you ever done that? Have you ever stayed in your character? I mean, I guess it's kind of a little, I mean, whenever, whenever you're acting, I mean, a, a little bit has to be part of you, obviously, the character that you're playing. <laughs> but I mean, if you're playing someone like the Two-Face or something like Aaron Eckhart was doing or, or like a Joker, I mean, I, I guess it's going to be kind of difficult to try to split those two, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think everybody does it differently, and everybody has a different process. And um, I mean, I I'm definitely in a small way kind of a you know like I'm playing a character right now that's kind of um, you know he has sort of a low status. He's going through a rough time, and he's um, you know uh, having so he's sort of sad and and not really getting any respect, and he's kind of a low status guy and. So, you know, I'm definitely aware of, you know, little things like I'll look down and like little things are happening like, uh, I don't know, like if there's not, a, my chair is not there for me to see, <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know, not that I would ever like be upset about that, but I'm just like every time that it's like, you know, some little thing isn't going my way, I, I try to go, okay, well that makes sense, yeah, things don't go my way. So that's about as close to method acting as, as I get, as I... I guess that would be the equivalent of like using it, you know, or something. I guess that you call that. But it's, you know, to me, to me, whatever, what everything is is about the project. It's all about the movie. It's all about, um, you know, uh, that's that's the thing. And so anything that I do is in support of. It's not in support of me, you know. It's in support of the movie, you know. Yeah. All right, John, well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, we're in San Antonio, and you, I believe, were born here. Is that correct? Oh, my goodness, 210. Of course that's what you... Yes, God bless <laughs> you for remembering that. That's just... Yes, I was born in Fort Sam Houston, which is an Army base to an Air Force pilot and his wife. That would be my mother. Uh, and... Um, I still, to this day, have not gotten a straight answer as to why, you know, when La- Lackland is right there, like why, why was I born on the on the army base? And the the best I can, my mom can't give me an answer, and I'm just thinking, well, maybe they just had a better hospital. I don't know. It's probably true. Nobody, it's kind of weird that no one knows. I, w- I was born at uh, Wilford Hall on Lackland. Yeah, so was I actually. Okay, well there you go. See, we're, so we we. So I think that uh, I always like to say, you know, when I was traveling around Europe the first time, when I first had my first passport, uh, well, probably not my first because I went to Ireland when I was a kid. But the first time I remember thinking about this, it says, uh, you know, because it just says the state that you're from and then USA, right? So I just thought Texas, USA, always seemed kind of badass, you know. Yeah, I I love it. I love it. <laughs> It's on your passport, so you, you're you're a lifer of Texas. I, I like to think, and it's you know it's funny. I don't even though I don't I, you know my girlfriend's uh, sister uh, uh, just moved there with their three kids, and the, the husband is from there, but they were living in California for a while, so now they're going to be over near the other grandparents. Uh, they moved to San Antonio, um, and uh, uh, so I, I was just about to say that I don't really have any connection there, but I've got I've got them. Um, and I think all of my relatives that ever that ever lived there are long past. Um, but somehow I still like if somebody like this is Texas or something like that, I get a little bit of a pang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why that is, but I feel like, so I must, unbeknownst or unconsciously, have a, a kinship with uh, Texas. I guess. Well, that's good. You're you're you're, yeah. you're you're okay in my book now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and a really good friend of mine, uh, 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 my my good friend Buddy is uh, from Port Arthur, like like Janis Joplin. Right? Oh yeah, oh cool. They got some good rap in Port Arthur. Good rap? Mm-hmm. Some good what? Rap. 
Like hip hop? Yep. Who, who, who? Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't know that. Who? I think of Port Arthur as being very uh, fishy. You know, rural, I guess, <laughs> Yeah, don't go. It's a uh, it's a piece of shit. It's terrible. But uh, yeah, the, in in the rap game they call it the PAT. It's Port Arthur, Texas. That's what they call it. Oh, nice. The, the PAT. The PAT. What, what rapper are you listening to? What what rapper are you listening to? Then? You you got Bun B and the Underground Kings. You know, <laughs> Pimp Pimp C. You know those fools. I, yeah, I, you know those fools. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this guy? And then you start playing the music. Yeah, they, they call it. They call it the Dirty South. That's not the dirty. I thought the Dirty the, South. It's was, Houston. Oh, ah, okay. It's, yeah, it's oh, right. Or H Town, right? So, so then you moved to Vermont, right? Well, you know, I mean, it was a circuitous route to uh, um, to, to Vermont. It, 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 uh, you know, as a I was a military brat for a few years uh, until my dad passed away, and so then once once he once he died, we moved to Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of D.C., uh, and I've been there until I, so from age 5 to 12, and then at age 12, I moved to Vermont. Now, you... And I, and I consider Vermont my, kind of my home state. So, were, were you in the same town as, uh, as old Bernie Sanders, is that right? Wasn't he your mayor or something? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about Bernie Sanders is that, uh, when I was a kid, my mom, when we first got there, she was um, finishing up her master's degree at the University of Vermont, which is in Burlington. And uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, who looked like an old man then, you know, uh, <laughs> was the mayor of Burlington. And hey, I'll tell you what else. Uh, ben and Jerry's was in a converted gas station, in, you know, in downtown Burlington, with plastic hanging from the ceilings, and they made the ice cream there, and Ben and Jerry were there scooping the ice cream and giving it to us as what? kids. So that's how far back I go uh, with Vermont. Um, and I remember one day kind of hanging around, you know, waiting for my mom to get out of class or whatever, uh, and these two business owners started having a, a, a you know an altercation, and they would scream at each other, and here comes ambling down the street this old, you know, Jewish guy, and uh, oh, that's the mayor, that's Mayor Bernie Sanders, <laughs> and he comes walking up to the two guys, and I don't really remember what he did or what he said, but I will tell you this: by the time he was done, they shook hands, and he walked, continued walking, you know, into the sunset, and uh, that's my one encounter with uh, with Bernie Sanders. So you're like, he's got my vote for whatever he does. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he, I gotta tell you, there is a little, there is definitely some Vermont, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a, you know, that, uh, that I'm a, a huge supporter of a lot of his policies, uh, but I absolutely was a supporter of Bernie Sanders, and I did have the opportunity to vote for him in the California primaries, and I did, so. Cool. It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's weird. It's sort of like, I think my vote for him was kind of like it was a vote for, I know where he comes from. I know what his deal is. I've been, I've watched him for a long time now. I know, I know he's sincere. I know he's passionate. And no matter what his politics are, the more of those kind of people we can have around, you know, how can that be bad? Really, you know, to me, people, people can disagree politically, but if you have kind of straight shooters in there, that sort of, um, if we can get them sort of outnumbering the, the the people, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, yeah, how often exactly. do you have the chance to vote for somebody that you've seen when there's no cameras around? Exactly. Uh, that's a great point. It's funny. I just told that story, and I didn't even quite get that, like what you just said. And you're right. I, that would be that would be unique because I think I, I think I shook hands with Jimmy Carter when I was way too young to vote, um, but you know, so never had a chance to vote for Jimmy Carter. But uh, but. Um, yeah, that's right. I think that he may be the only one. Um, yeah. So far. The only person I've ever met and then voted for. Yeah, so, yeah, like Steve said, so far. But so far, that's right. That's right. Are you guys, are someone going to announce the candidacy, candidacy now? Is that what's coming? Uh, well, we'll let, let's just say one of us might be uh, the VP on uh, Kanye's ticket. <laughs> <laughs> 
the guy who listens to hip hop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, so after Vermont, I guess you know you went to uh, Mass, you went to UMass, but how how did you get into or what led you into movies, TV, theater, stand up, sketch, improv? Time life and, books, uh, and you went around for abortion rights, right? I know. I, I had. I had. I had, I had that's the. Um, I can tell you that uh, the two of the three guns that have been pulled on me in my life were doing that. Um, well, tell me about the other one. You sure you weren't in Texas when you did that? <laughs> Before Uber, that's good. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's funny people. Well, people complain about Uber, but I think I think it's a great. I mean, I don't know about Uber specifically, but the whole rideshare idea is, um, I think, a, a great one. And I, I, you know, a good idea. 
can't keep a good idea down, right? I mean, if it's a good idea, then the cab companies are going to have to adopt it, right? I mean, or, or perish, you know? Well, it's, it's funny that, uh, that you were a cab driver in San Francisco because I believe in the early 1900s, like in the 1920s or something, there was a, an Uber-style company that started way back then. And, oh, wow. and uh, they, they got ran out of business by um, legislation brought on by the, the bus um, organizations. They, oh, the, the city transportation? Yeah, city transportation had... Uh, had the local government pass a bunch of laws that basically prohibited uh, Uber driving. They made it to where you had to you had to have two two drivers <clears throat> in the car and all this other stuff that just made it not not worth it. It's pretty interesting. So people were driving around their Model Ts. I like that. Yeah, I mean it was it was a long fucking time ago, but I think it was in San Francisco. So that's that's pretty cool. So when when did you start playing drums and guitar? Wait, so, so you, 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 you were in the, the drum line? Is that what you're saying? Uh, say that again? I said you were in the drum line? Is that what you're saying? You got, you're like, hey, you guys ever heard of a wipeout? Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Move well, over, Neil Perry. <laughs> see it John you're like well you know see I have this thing with my wrist where uh, I got, yeah, uh, I've been beating off a lot yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> sorry good so uh, but okay so you yeah. you play you play guitar also Does he own Hanson? Huh? Does he own Hanson? Hey, back back to this voiceover thing. Um, you were a voice in Thundercats. Shut up! <laughs> were you really? I know, isn't that nutty? You know, 
it's funny. I, I was that was a real privilege. I mean, that's one of my favorite little voiceover jobs because that was my son, uh, Eamon, when he was a kid. He was one of the series regulars on that on those two seasons that they did, and he was Wiley Cat. And the maybe even like a flashback sequence. What's that? They said the little baby cat. What's the little baby cat's name? Yeah, the two kids. You know, Wiley Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat. Yeah. Um, my, oh wow! Cool. My son was Wild Cat on, on the new on the new one. You know, we're talking about the reboot, right? Right, 2012 or something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. So you know, in 2012, he's 12 years old. He's you know my kid. So he he had a little boy's voice, and he did a great job on that show. And they kind of said, "Oh, we need this flashback sequence where we meet his dad. Would you like to play his dad?" That's one of the few roles that, I, like you were talking about auditioning. I mean, they just gave me that role. It was bring dad to work day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bring dad to work day. That's kick ass. I didn't too much. <laughs> right. They're all, hey son, can I come back? They're like, uh, dad, we're going to have our people call your people. <laughs> now, didn't, yeah, exactly. didn't you work with him on, on something else? Uh, I think. That that's that's before. Pretty, that's pretty fucking cool. A yeah. friend of mine was a was in a movie with him, and and he had nothing but good things to say about him. That's all you can. That's all you can go off. Kind of like Bernie Sanders, you can only go off of your personal interaction. <laughs> any any exactly fucking right. broke up a fight? That's, 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 a, that's a good connection that you're making there. That's right. That's uh, mm. who, who? What do we have to go on usually? You know what? What we hear in the media, or what we see on TV, or what they've said in a in a you know carefully constructed uh, public uh, forum. You know, or how how often do we get to go on? You know, I watched I watched him bring two. People together who shook hands when he walked away. So there you go. That's pretty dope. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Oh, you you were in a, a one of my favorite TV shows, uh, Perception. Yeah. Perception on TNT with Eric McCormick. I loved that show. Uh, Did you have a scene with Al Pacino or Helen Mirren? Well, yeah, I had a, I had a bunch of scenes with Helen Mirren. I mean, all, all my scenes are with Helen Mirren. Um, all, whatever they are, five scenes or something. But uh, uh, Al, you know, Al and I worked together like on his last day, actually, uh, because, you know, the two of them are talking and I kind of come up to them as he's leaving. So we were on set together, but not specifically interacting with each other but mm -hmm. um but that was that was great because i mean when we got done shooting that scene
scene, he was done for the, you know, done for the shoot. And, that's a wrap uh, on Al Pacino. What's that? And that's a wrap on Al Pacino. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, because the whole thing got pushed. I mean, everything everything had moved forward because Bret Midler had gotten injured, and, and so we production had stopped for a couple weeks. And so he had places he needed to be. So we were all going to be finishing up. We, we front-loaded all of his stuff and shot everything. And then, um, you know, he was a very, he's very, um, you know, with, with someone like that, you know, somebody of that caliber or, you know, whatever, he, I mean, any actor, really, you would not want to get in, inside their process. And so, you know, everybody was very respectful of him. But he was always nice. He would smile and say hi. But, you know, he wasn't chatty. Um, so I wasn't even sure if he knew who I was. I mean, I sat there in many a scene, like, you know, sitting next to the wall or I was nearby or whatever. So once we got done shooting that day, we're like, we're walking back. The two of us are walking back toward our trailers. And uh, I hear from behind me, he goes, ah, I guess I won't see you anymore. And I was like, <laughs> he talking to me? What the fuck? You know, I like turned around and he's like looking right at me and I went, oh, well, yeah. Mr. Pacino, I, I, what an honor it's been to watch your work, you know. And he said, uh, he goes, yeah, thanks, you know. And I, you know, I realized in that moment, I didn't realize, but he's leaving and he's aware that he's not going to see me anymore because he's leaving. I was just stunned that he was even thinking about me at all. And uh, and so I said, well, geez, can I get a picture with you? I never do that. I never get pictures with anybody. But I thought, you know, this is special. Um, and so his assistant was going by, and uh, and he said, you know, here, take a picture of us. So we took a picture. We shook hands. He took a picture of us, and then Al looked at me, and he goes, it's a picture of us as our characters. <laughs> was he wearing the hair? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> and so when I got back to my trailer, he had had it printed up. He had the picture printed up, and it was leaning in my trailer on the on the counter with a little note you know best best wishes from Al you know oh that's cool uh, yeah so like he's he's awesome that's badass no 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 dealers no no nobody you know Jeffrey Tambor could not have been cooler I you know loved 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 working with Jeffrey Tambor loved hanging out with him um he's he's just a he's crazy entertaining and very he's a very he's a good conversationalist right like he just very he's very interested in other people and knowing you know what's going on he's not a sort of a typical kind of i don't want to i don't want to say anything about actors but sometimes actors are not focused on others as much as they are right they're focused on themselves for their next trying to make a living it makes sense right that's right Well, that dude's that dude's having a renaissance right now. What's that? That guy's oh, yeah. having he's having a renaissance. I mean, I remember he's watching he's him. He's he's one of my acting heroes. I would call Jeffrey Tambor one of my acting heroes. When he did Frank Kingsley, uh, Hank Kingsley for Larry Sanders, that's one of my all time favorite roles of anybody. That's funny. I was gonna I was gonna harken back to when he was on Three's Company. <laughs> Three's Company, really? Oh uh, wow! Yeah, he he played. Uh, he played uh, Terry's boss. I think he was a. I think he was a dentist, something like that. And then I think he he crossed over. He went with them to like Three's a Crowd when it spun off. I didn't, honestly, I didn't even know like three, Three's a Crowd was a. <laughs> yeah, it spun off. <laughs> um, I know it's funny. We were sitting around at one point, and and he made the connection that. life man I was at Al Pacino's house uh, before we started shooting uh, with David Mamet and Mike Hausman the producer and Al Pacino and Ben Midler and <laughs> and and John Pira what? John Pira who? and uh, <laughs> and
Yeah, that was a while back. Hey, so when you were at, at Al's house and you were at that, that dinner or that party or whatever it was, did, did anybody throw you their keys and, and tell you <laughs> and, and tell you to, to park it next to something nice? Well, I kept waiting for something like that. <laughs> I mean, really, it's sort of strange to be sitting there with all of those luminaries and, you know, kind of like, what's going on? Like, that's that I'm sitting next to. Like, what? They just start handing you trash know. in their coats <laughs> just randomly. <laughs> Like you're still sitting Jeffrey there. Showed up. He showed up with a big paper bag and he said, uh, he said, the big Jew is here with bagels. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. You know, I'm like sitting there poolside and everything else for God's sakes. But, uh, that's yeah. that's so pretty cool. Right, Yeah, that's you're doing pretty well. That's good. Sounds like you're having fun. It is. It's, yeah, I can't. I, I wouldn't even begin to complain. But I, if an actor ever tells you that it's a struggle, even even more so when when you're succeeding, it's you know I, I get it. Um, you know, believe them because uh, you know even even when you when you it's it's a lot of. Uh, Anyway, I got no complaints. I have a great job. I have great kids. Uh, I've got a great girlfriend. She's got a great kid. I have so- really solid uh, pals. A few really, really solid pals who are who uh, keep me uh, on the straight and narrow and help me to be a better person. So I'm, you know, I, you know, LA sort of being a weird place, you know. Well, you know, speaking of uh, speaking of people in LA and friends of yours, um, you, you're actually this is the first time that we've had a guest on that uh, that knows a, a previous guest. Um, f- probably a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, we had on a, an acquaintance of yours, Mr. Bill Watterson. It's Tweeterson, sir. Oh yeah. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, Dave made a maze. Dave, Dave, Dave yeah. Made a maze, yeah, they yeah, had yeah. they had just won the audience award at uh, Slam Dance. I, I can't wait to go see it. I, I, you know, every little clip that he puts up, or you know, I just go, God, what is this? It just looks, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it really does. It's like I'm. We can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, when are they going to do it? Because I know we talked about like what the release date would be and. You know, I, I all of that was up in the air back yeah, then. Obviously, that's a that's a long process. I mean, you know that you know that too. Doing the whole waiting two years for your show to come out or movie, but I mean, it's just watching it. I mean, just the clips and then just hearing about it. The 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 background. I mean, it just it sounds pretty fucking cool. Pretty excited about it. Well, and, and you know, I mean, when we're on the when we're on the new to podcast, um, you know, he he would. Uh, you know, talk about his movie, and I don't, it's not like I thought little of it, but I, you know, it was, I mean, everybody's always making movies. I had, I could not have imagined what a, what an undertaking that must have been, you know, just judging from the clips, what a sort of visually, you know, stunning uh, and, and sophisticated, uh, you know, I still don't know what it's about uh, <laughs> at all, but, uh, but it looks really, really great, and it's a sort of a, Yeah, we're very excited. We can't wait to see it. So, can you can you tell us about uh, the show that's coming out? Um, when is it? Is it in May? Right. I think it's on Showtime. Is it on Showtime? It's like a I don't know, like a remake or something cheesy. I don't know. I don't something, know. We're, we're, something. We're something. We're unfamiliar. Something. It's like I think it's called Hooters. I don't know or, what you're talking about? What? What? Are you yeah, it's like a Hooters kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am. I am on. Uh, I. I am on the, the the season three is what we say of um, of Twin Peaks. Seasons one and two being in nineteen ninety and nineteen ninety one, and season three being now. Uh, it is a. Um, it's not a reboot. It's a continuation. It really is a, a legitimate season three. 
John, let me pause you right there. We we have a lot of yeah. uh, we have a lot of listeners who weren't even born when the first two seasons of that came out. So, <laughs> do you think you could maybe f- give a little give a little synopsis of what seasons one and two are about? What's the show about? Well, first of all, I would highly highly recommend watching it. Uh, it is really one of the greatest shows ever put on television. I can I can clearly I think everybody can remember that. Even people that didn't like it, didn't watch it, remembers that show coming on because it was so uh, ground, it was so different than anything that had ever been on. And I mean, looking, you don't know, I guess, that it's groundbreaking at the time, but like looking back on it, it absolutely um, set the stage. You know, it ch- it changed things, and uh, you know, it was just kind of weird. I think then, weird and cool, and you know, interesting and dreamlike, and uh, you know, he. he you know, he and Mark Frost, David Lynch and Mark Frost, just absolutely changed television for sure. But uh, it's about a um, it, there's a murder in a small town up in uh, up in uh, Washington State, and uh, this kind of well known uh, teenager, high school girl, is killed, and they spend uh, a couple of seasons uh, trying to figure out who did it, and um, and they. Yeah, like oh, like I, a. I, see, I who, remember that scene. Like a who shot Jr. kind of a thing. That was from. That's exactly right. Dallas. It was as big, if not bigger than, than who shot Jr. That's right. Who killed Laura Palmer? So to go through auditions and the whole the whole thing to get that or how did that how did that come about Just hired 
So do you uh, think it was like a, chemi- a chemistry meeting? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, David wasn't even there. I mean, he would watch. He watched the tape later, and they sort of put the camera in the middle and said, sort of pretend like this is David. So I did, you know. And uh, and um, you know, it's it's like. I mean, it's just hard to describe it. It's sort of like the whole thing is just very magical and very kind of otherworldly, like right from the get go. So later on, once I got the job, I asked the casting person that you know, uh, um, you know, Krista Husar was the um, Krista Husar and uh, Johanna Ray were the were the uh, casting, uh, you know, Johanna being the, the lead casting, uh, you know, her agency. One, two, wonderful, wonderful casting people. But but you know, just like. You know, like you just never know who you're talking to. I said, I said to her, like, what? How did I get here? You know, what? How did you know to even call me in here? And she goes, Oh, well, remember, like, you know, Krista said, Well, remember, like, two years ago, you came in and uh, and I was working at another casting agency, and I was just an assistant, and you you auditioned for this um, independent movie, and you were a bus driver, and you had one line, you know, and you just raised your hand and said. Welcome to Los Angeles, and and she like did the little hand motion that I did, you know, like as if it you know had made an impact on her, and I was just so humbled. I was like, oh my god, you you, I came in and did that movie never even got made. I mean, that was a small, tiny, independent movie that never got made, but yet she remembered something I did with my hand and something I did with my flex, something about me, and then this is why they're just geniuses. These casting people are are. Straight up artists. I mean, the good ones are do something that normal human beings can't do, and that's that they have this encyclopedic memory of the sort of nuances of people, and they can they, they have this puzzle that comes at them, and they are able to sort of draw upon people that they've met for years and years and years, and they see people in ways that other people don't see them. And uh, anyway, so here I am, you know on Twin Peaks because I said welcome to Los Angeles you know two years earlier and Krista God bless her remembered me you know just blows my mind can you can you remember what you talked about during that um, like when you were pretending you were talking to Dave Lynch like what what did you Uh, I mean I'm not being coy I really don't remember Um, uh, you know I don't I have no recollection at all. The whole thing was pretty surreal. Um, I mean, if I really sat and thought about it, maybe, but it's sort of like, I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what? I think I do remember. I do remember, actually. I, I related a, uh, I told him a dream that I'd had when I was a kid, you know, when I was younger. I told him a dream that I'd had that, that was really vivid to me about, um, you know, where I was kind of like yelling up this uh, hill at a, uh, So you just started talking. That's awesome.
Yeah. Well, because yeah. in the show, like, I, in in the show, like, doesn't I imagine it came true. There was a couple of things that I sort of like dreamt about, and then they happened. You know, I mean, it was just very. Uh, anyway, it is just a, it was a, a very very magical and profoundly satisfying. Well, um, that that experience. probably spoke to him a little bit because 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 I, I I did I haven't watched every episode. I, I skimmed kind of like I did like a Cliff Notes version of of um, the Twin Peaks um, so I, I know that they they had dream sequences and then um, I, I know him as Trey McDougal <laughs> from Sex and the City but the but the um, the, the detective <laughs> the guy you're talking about um, Dale Cooper D- D- Dale Cooper uh, yeah Detective Cooper right uh, so he he see he has dreams and he sees like ways to capture and like puts pieces together um through his dreams and like who killed laura palmer and all this crap so like i I, obviously that spoke to him a little bit with you talking about dreams and they're like oh shit this guy knows exactly what we're what we're all about so it's like perfect yeah it really it seems like he really is kind of connected to uh definitely a storyteller yeah big time I can see that for sure uh, I I just keep picturing him saying okay tell me about your dream go (laughs) that's pretty good that's pretty good David Lynch (laughs) tell me about your dreams he was so great what a a wonderful wonderful guy just like so that way the your I, I mean obviously your there's another plot going on that we don't know about but not only are the characters I don't know about it. there's another plot going on that I don't know about that none of us know about yeah exactly <laughs> and that's when, when this thing comes out I'm gonna be as surprised as you are <laughs> and, you know? and that's what I'm saying like the way you're, the way they want the characters to be like really fucking astonished and be like I have no idea what's go on, going on like you literally you're not acting like that's He's capturing that on on film. You know what I mean? I mean that's yeah. No, it's a good point. I hadn't even really thought about it that way. That's. Uh, I think you're right. I think there's um, he's, there's a certain element where he's going to try to capture. I mean, there were there were times where we would do entire rehearsals, and then I would forget. Like to this day, there are certain things that I can't remember when the camera came in and when and when it when it was there and when it wasn't there. Because there was no real line of demarcation. I mean, he, he had a very specific process where just he and the actors would go into a scene and we talk about it. And here's what I think is going to happen, and how do you think that's going to work? And let's work through it. And you know, how are you going to move and whatever? And then after we did that, he would then you know then then we would we would bring 
deep where we were shooting and 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 we had to do this pickup and uh uh you know pick up this one thing and and i kind of went through the the amount of action you know we're going back to get it so start you know we already know what the what the start and middle and end of the scene is so we're going back to pick up this this one part and so i went and did it and then nobody said cut so i just kept you know david didn't say cut so i just kept going and i kept moving and i kept going through the scene and and the steady cam guy was like following me and and we just like kept and it was so it was so great because uh no he, he didn't say cut so we just kept going until we ran out of the stage you know until until they were like lights and you know sandbags and stuff you know? cool so you got, <laughs> you got a long you got a long one shot kind of cam going yeah well that's right he, he goes you know david's like ah oh, you know we got a twofer on that one so it's like he was able to we yeah, my, my point is he was very, very organic. He was more interested in what was happening, it seemed like, than what was meant to happen. He was far more far more open to the reality as it unfolded than, than something he uh, you know, was trying to do. That's, do. Do you know how many, uh, is it going to be two seasons or are they going to put all 18 as one season? May twenty May twenty first, correct? What's that? On May twenty first, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right, on May twenty first. But but then they're gonna apparently they're gonna do like two a week, maybe, is what this site was saying, and then like maybe one of them is live and then and then and then the next day there's two of them, that one plus another one. Or I you know, I, <laughs> the, the the real answer is I don't know. You know, I don't know how they're gonna do it. I know that there's gonna be a double episode on the 21st of May, and that's all I know. Because 18 is a lot for nowadays, unless you're like a sitcom. It really is. I mean, it was a huge. Uh, I mean, it's really a testament to, to Lynch and Frost, you know, and what they what they accomplished, and sort of the respect that they. Because um, you know, there was a time there where where maybe it wasn't gonna happen, and then just based on their street cred. You know, Showtime stepped in and said, "No, we'll, we'll give you everything you want. You know, we'll make you whatever you need." It is is it? Make, are make are they hour long episodes? Say again. Are they hour long episodes? Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. It is. Well, I'm you know I'm guessing they're going to be the forty four minutes or whatever, right? Oh uh, yeah. Not even yeah. on Showtime, right? Well, yeah. no, sometimes they do it like fifty two minutes, forty eight minutes, something like that. I guess maybe they might show it on. Oh, for syndication. Cable, for yeah, syndication. Sy- yeah, syndication. Anything. I mean, you bring up a good point. It seems like they have the flexibility to do whatever they want. On Showtime, I mean, so. Netflix does whatever they want. So. Yeah, but it's Showtime. So it's, just, it's funny to me to try to, like, I'm just going to have no answers for you. Every answer is going to be, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, that's, but that's fucking awesome. Like, how no one knows. I think it's and, awesome and, that you're just as excited and, to see it as everybody and else. You're just like, if people are asking you shit, and you're like, I have no idea. And, like, who did you star with? I have no idea. Like, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> all you know is that. Well, and, and I'm such a I'm such a huge fan, you know. Like I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a I'm I was already a fan of the show, and now I'm even more of a fan than I than I've ever been. You know, being it's it's a cool kind of it's a cool thing to be a fan of something and and get to participate in in helping to make it is a, definitely a a giant gift, you know. That's badass. Yeah, like, how do you, how, I mean, obviously, you, you said you're a fan, so I mean, like, knowing that you got it, and like, how did, how did you feel when you received a call, or whenever they called you in, where you just like, oh shit, I mean, this is, this is pretty big time. I mean, here. as I said, it's just, I mean, like I said, it's the whole thing, the whole process was just so surreal, that something about it felt strangely normal, and, you know, obviously, I'm not completely unaware of the great big, you know, it doesn't really serve me, first of all, to focus on the size of the and scope. First of all, you don't know. You don't know how big something's going to be. Correct. And and I don't and I don't think that I was aware of the like I am now of the depth and breadth of the fan base. 
<laughs> exactly. That's what well, I'm you've saying. had a lot of those those occasions to practice. I mean, you know, <laughs> exactly. you, you're, you're having dinner with Pacino and Helen Mirren, and you're just like, yeah, whatever. What's up? Oh, David Lynch, I'm listening. Well, no, I'm just sitting there going, when are, when is some, when are they going to come and, like you said, like say, go park my car? You know? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Well, uh, since... Ben had, a, ben had a smart car. Ben, ben left, uh, when we left and went out front, she had one of those little tiny smart cars. I thought that was adorable. Did, really? Who did? Helen? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Ben, ben, ben did the role first, and, then, and then Helen, uh, when Ben got injured, Helen came in. And gotcha, ben, gotcha. Yeah. So, Ben had one. Okay. Uh, That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. It reminds me, you know, it's Silicon Valley, how... how God, yeah, the after, it's there. the guy that died, right? The, the guy that died in the first yeah. season. <laughs> yeah, his car like fits he, between. He takes off in that, that one, you know, three, two foot wide car. Yeah, and he fits between the two cars. <laughs> that shit's <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. So, so since we we've somehow managed to draw a line um, through this podcast with Bernie Sanders, I just want to point something out. Uh, so a long time ago, you had an interaction with Bernie Sanders that was memorable enough to you that later on you voted for him and then you were Bernie Sanders to your casting agent who saw you do something and then many years later remembered you for it. Is there a question there? No, there's not a question. I just think it's really cool that uh, our... Those memories stick, yeah. That, I mean, that, that our, we are influenced by our memories and our interactions, and so you never know when somebody's watching and when, even when there's not a camera on, like with Bernie, or, you know, even when the show didn't go, like with you in the, the first audition, the bus driver. Yeah, you said it didn't even get made, and now look at well, you. Well, it's an excellent point, you know? I mean, like, it all kind of counts, you know, in, in a way, right? It's like, uh, you know, just to... Yeah. Pay attention. Pay attention. Somebody's always watching. That's awesome. I think that uh, it worked out really well with that. That I mean, I'm sure that at the time you were a little bit, you know, sad that the the bus driver thing didn't go or the movie didn't get made. But I mean, boom, it, it paid in dividends. Well, I mean, I honestly didn't even remember. Like when she mentioned that, I had to like strain to like remember. It. And you know what? I hard. I don't. I don't think I really do remember it. I mean, I think I, it's sort of been suggested that it happened, and I think I. I mean, yeah, maybe, I, I, maybe your mind blocked it out for you intentionally. Maybe. It was... Yeah, no, you're probably right. Well, there is a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very insightful thing that you just said. That there, there is a lot of that in terms of just the survival of a working actor. Is It kind of has to go in one ear and one can out the other. You know, when you, you have to walk away from those those auditions, you know, after you do them, there's, you got to, as you too said, right, you got to leave it behind. Yeah, those look brutal, too. <laughs> I mean, I've never been to an audition. Well, no, I did. I read for uh, an ESPN thing. And that was fucking <laughs> nerve-wracking. When I was a little, little kid, they, they were auditioning in San Antonio for a... Uh, it was a Henry Thomas movie. It was right after E.T. It was called Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> and my sister and I went and, and read for that. And that was the most horrible experience ever. <laughs> I can't I can't believe people do that on a regular basis all the time. That's just insane. I commend you, sir. <laughs> yeah, hats off to you for sticking that out. That sucks. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, I mean, the way I look at it is that, I mean, this is this is what I do. It's what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I've even joked about it that I, I'm sort of afflicted by it, right? Because it's not like I have a choice. So my, you know, my attitude about it is that, you know, when it, when it's tough and when it sucks, it's sort of like, well, this is what it is. This is another part of what it is, and it's not like I'm going to go do something else. So I guess I just have to find a way through this shitty part. You, know? you, can, you can pick up drums again or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, here's my plan B. Drums. And then your plan B, you can start talking about abortions again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just go door to door and just talk about abortions. It's always a crowd pleaser. 
<laughs> or, I mean, you, you could always, you know, stick with what you're good at and helping some hillbilly comedian load a, load a giant beanbag into a slingshot. <laughs> As many times as I've seen that commercial, I, I am pretty sure you're excited every time it comes on. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, they were, they were, that was real good money. You know, it's funny, you do things like that, and the amount of money that you get paid to do something like that is, you know, it's incredible. And, and of course, you're incredibly grateful for it. But, you know, what it also does is it also allows me to then go, you know, do a little three-page uh, you know, web series, you know, for a friend for no money, you know, uh, oh, you know, yeah, you can cool. do, go do a show for no money, you know, because stuff like that pays, right? Right. So did you get paid when you did teachers? Say that again? Did you get paid when you did teachers, that web series? No. No, no money so far on that one. I'm waiting for checks, but I don't know. I, 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 I don't. <laughs> I mean, that was another one that was a sort of a baby of uh, John Stahl, who was the creator of that, and, you know, he was, uh, he was great, you know, he, he, um, he completely came up with that whole scenario, because he, he is, a, he was a school teacher, um, and so he kind of came up with that whole scenario and got a bunch of improvisers, and, uh, and we went in and we did one, we did one, and, like, did it with my kids, and just had a couple of us, and then he kind of expanded that and brought a bunch of really good music. Before we let you go, because I, I appreciate you giving us this time, and I know you got to go. Um, if you really want to laugh, uh, you, you can go to YouTube and put in uh, your name, John Pericello, and the first thing that comes up is a video that was recorded two days ago, and it's just it's just about forty five seconds of some guy about fifty yards away rowing in high seas. In choppy waters. That's it. That's all it is. Huh? 45 okay, seconds. Man. He's just rowing in choppy water. Just rowing like in a boat. Like on the Great Lake or something. Am I in the video? No. No. <laughs> that's, that's why it's so awesome. It's just 45 seconds of some no, dude rowing. That, that, just, if you punch in my name, that comes up. Yes. <laughs> it was filmed <laughs> two funny. days ago. And you can't. it's so far away you can't even tell who the person is. Maybe it's you, John. <laughs> it's hilarious. You should check it out. Well, no, the thing that I've grown used to, though, is that there are now three John Piracellos in show business in one way or another. One is my incredibly accomplished guitar-playing um, cousin. musician cousin, John Piracello, who's about my age. And then his brother's son, who's a 20-something kid, uh, is, is a writer and producer uh, and filmmaker, um, budding. Uh, here in um, in Los Angeles now, John Pierchello. So there's uh, it's I, I don't I don't I don't own the name anymore. You know, there's <laughs> there's there's three of us holding it up now. So but you got the Twitter. Everybody. Oh yeah, so yeah, you had the Twitter then. <laughs> so why don't why don't you give a why don't you give us where people can follow you with your Twitters and your Instagrams and your Facebooks and whatever? Where can we find you? Oh. 
Nice. And uh, let's see, uh, what else did you? Uh, what else do I do? Twitter. I don't know. Do you I do that? Do you do that other one? Then I have a website. My website is puretrello.com. Okay. Oh, so you took that one too. That's awesome, man. Take them all. Take the J Perchello. Yeah, take, yeah. take the John. Like spell John the different way. Hey, well, thank you so much for taking the time, dude. We really appreciate it. Thanks, John. I appreciate it, man. You are so welcome. It's been an honor and a privilege. Thanks so much for thinking of me and having me on your show. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to your your um, Twin Peaks and uh, Barry when Barry whenever it comes out. Yeah, I'll thank keep... you so much. Thanks for uh, thanks for the plug and uh, and give uh, San Antonio my love, won't you? Oh, definitely. Huh, will do, man. Absolutely. Take it easy, John. Take care.